I wrote a book all about Notion, and in this series I'm speaking with other contributors to the book, and this time I'm speaking with Jonathan Stewart, who actually helped me write and edit the book as I was going through it, and he's a simplicity specialist helping other people simplify their work lives and workflows, so let's see what John has to say about Notion. Jonathan Stewart, how do you use Notion? Badly, no. <laughs> um, I use Notion for my team to help keep track of all the things that are in my head that aren't knowledge-based. And, yeah, <laughs> nice that's how I use it. Nice and simple. So, in in the book, uh, obviously, you were the you were the para example, the projects area resources and archives example from building a second brain. So, did did you sort of like adopt that and then change that? Did you adopt it straight away? And how has the new update actually impacted how you're using Notion? Oh, oh, it's impacted. Um, so yes, I started with a very simple para setup. In fact, the template's still available. My original para system is still available for free um and it kind of molded quite a lot from there what was originally you know projects areas resources um the archive was a tick box <laughs> resources was originally just like my knowledge the information that i have documents that i had that i wanted to attach to clients very action-based as we were talking about in the thing we were recording before <gasps> oh behind the scenes um but it's m m changed quite a bit since l taking my knowledge information and management and idea generation and podcast production out of notion and there's now kind of more of a it's more of a projects and areas, a pa. <laughs> it's a pa now. Um, and so my areas are what I call hubs. And these are things that need to keep my attention. These are things that I have to have in front of me that I need to see every day. Because if I don't see these things, they'll vanish. What I had when I originally had my Notion system was my projects were buried underneath, you know, tasks. And, and it was kind of from tasks to projects to areas. And it became really difficult for me to remember what I was actually working on. And I had a massive list of like all the things I want to do as someone who likes to do lots of things and has lots of things on, on his mind and, you, and quickly puts ideas in for projects I want to do later. I want to be able to see them, but I have a series of really key things that I need to focus on. My business has shifted quite a lot in the last year and a half to be a little bit more focused on, on a specific direction, in a specific direction. And so my system had to adapt to that. It had to be adapted so that I could see all of the key players in my business that I have to have a good solid grasp on and understanding on for example all of the products that i have the templates that i'm releasing the the book that i'm writing um the podcast that i'm producing the uh, and then some really timely stuff which could be seen as a project but it's something that has to be a big attention point for me i do not stick to the para method very 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 tightly at all um i view it as kind of a a guideline uh if you're not sure where to place it put it here kind of thing versus uh i will strictly attest to para i have power extending beyond notion i have it as my google drive file system because it's easy for my team to access as well that is a little bit more traditional projects areas resources and archives etc um, but yeah, for my notion, I have my hub, which is basically all of the things that are really important that I need to be able to see at a glance. And then I kind of have my tasks with a fantastic formula, um, which allows me to see a human version, what I call a human deadline, where it's like showing me how many days, because I have time blindness. And I look at a date, let's say, for example, it's the 19th when we're recording this. How long is he going to take to publish this one? Um, the 19th. And if I see, you know, the 1st of April, I view that as a month's time when that's not actually the case. It's a couple of... <laughs> Let me have a look at the formula. <laughs> one, Yeah, it's a couple of weeks' time. Um, and so the formula actually, ironically, yes, 
I actually have a task that's a week in four days. That's quite funny. Um, and so that allows me to see that and kind of judge how I work. Everything is also my templates, if we want to go that nerdy into it. Right, so so next question then, Mr. Simplicity Specialist. What are the processes around your task list and calendar? Now, when I spoke with Conrad, he combines his calendars a little bit. I'm curious to see if you do the same. Combines calendars? I have one calendar for my business and and one calendar for my personal. That's about it. Like, I, I use Google Calendar. I don't... Well, I do pull my events in for the team. Yeah. But that's it. It's not necessarily for me. Sometimes I write notes. Most of the time I use Otter, which is a transcription service, which means I don't need to take notes so I can focus on the coaching and the consulting and the work. I can focus on being present instead of focusing on going clicky-clacky and tappy-tappy. Um, my tasks are if I need to do something, it goes in there. Uh, okay, so question number three, as he takes a sip. How do you stay on track daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, etc., with actions, tasks, projects, goals, KPIs, OKRs, whatever words you want to use? Unfortunately, <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? You had yes. to mention the ABCs, didn't you? Yes. How do I stay on track? Um, truthfully, I don't because that is not how my brain functions. I have a team and I have an online business manager and she basically keep, kicks my ass and keeps me on track. Um, my notion system is less around, it's less deadline driven and more extended cognition. <laughs> um, and more like an extension of my brain and more of a like, this is a place to put things that I can play with. In terms of staying on track, I'm in my notion every day. I am always in my notion. It is my single source of truth. So hate that place. It is, it is the one place I go when I want to find everything that I want to do and things I need to do. That's how I stay on track. And it's very much a... Unlike many business owners, I've built my business around me and knowing that I am naturally a very disorganized person and I kind of follow my flow and I work that way allows me to store things in a place where I can come back to it when the flow is right, when the time is right. I, I like that little last one. So moving on to the next question. Generations of information. Oh yeah. yeah That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Uh, right. Next question. What does extended cognition mean to you? Now, before you answer this, just for clarification, this is using the idea of building a second brain, uh, but built on the philosophy from Andy Clark. And I know, John, you, you and I have spoken quite extensively about extended cognition. So what, what are your thoughts uh, and, and how, do, how do you use it? I love it. <laughs> for one, not building a second brain, the extended cognition. And just for clarification, his explanation was for you guys. <laughs> Not for me, because we've had these conversations so much. Yeah, yeah, quite a few times. Yeah, and nearly every single pop 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 Goes in the Bruno bin. <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> um, let's get to answering the question, shall we, John? How Sorry. do you, how do you yeah. use extended cognition? <laughs> how I use extended cognition is by getting as many things out of my head as possible that I need to be able to remember or give to the team or to other people. It's more getting it out into a physical space. Then, uh, which is probably more embodied cognition, which uh, we won't know, go there. We won't. It's, <laughs> we're, we're not going. And there. it's Bruno it's Bin. More... <laughs> In the Bruno Bin. <laughs> yeah, it it's it is providing cognitive relief for me. That is the point. It's just to relieve 
the amount that is in my brain. I have ideas that generate at an alarming rate and not just for business, but in life, in kids and family. I have so many things that are going on at the exact same time. And for me, the extended cognition is just to get it out of my head. It is just a, it is my form of like, okay, I am now taking it from here and putting it in here and I'm gonna just put it there so then I can revisit it when I'm ready. Extending cognition is just getting stuff out of your head, putting really simple, physically getting it out, putting it somewhere, making it physical, putting it into the environment around you, making it real. <laughs> okay, next question. Moving on to the next question. Very seamlessly, I may add. Uh, how do you use your notes? So... I, when I spoke with Conrad, he mentioned that he actually does his journaling and his notes inside of Obsidian now. So he moved away from Notion towards Obsidian. I believe, John, you are the same. Yep. Yep, I'm in Obsidian for any kind of note-taking idea kind of creation. I don't journal in anywhere. <laughs> I don't really journal, physical journals. A lot of things are audio and they are normally done with someone else. When I'm trying to figure something out, I'll message someone that I trust and have a conversation and just brain fart it out of my mouth um, because that's how I process things. And often I end up coming up with the answers myself, but my obsidian is where I have my notes for generating ideas, connecting ideas for the network thought because I do a small smidgen of research um, in comparison to, to Mr. Danny here. Um, when I'm trying to create ideas, I love the idea of just putting them somewhere. And Obsidian was just so much easier. Notion was... Notion was action-based. We were talking about this on the podcast just now. Notion was very much an action focus. It's like, connect this resource with this project for this person. Um, whereas now what my focus is because i'm creating more content i have two maybe three podcasts i have nearly three podcasts that i'm a part of one that is still in production one that is mine and one that is the one that me and danny do together link in um, description i create link in the yeah there you go link in the <laughs> description um and then i have like resources that i create and course ideas and like all of those notes when i'm trying to create a, a workshop for example i was working on a summit um, that I'm I'm doing some doing a presentation for, um, and I wanted to collect all of my ideas together and start to refine them and put them into a, an understandable language that is more approachable for everyone, which is really important for me, um, because I work with business owners which don't really care about metacognition and neuroscience, but they need it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I tried to, to turn things into smaller bite-sized chunks that people can take in that is simplified enough but still has the concepts clearly and the nuances available and so I basically follow humongous massive rabbit holes which I jump down and Obsidian allows me to do that Notion I had a system to do that as well but it was clunky and annoying and action based, not natural. Oh, cool. This is this is an idea. And oh, that links to that. And oh, how that that's interesting. And so that's what my notes are for content, I suppose, but also of like linking my ideas together and creating what I kind of taking the ideas that I find, connecting them together and basically allowing them just to sink in. There's no, with a lot of what I do, there is no actual massive written out process that I follow. It is once again, very much subconscious. My ideas come together quite naturally. I don't try to force them together. I follow what, what I am interested in. Um, which may mean sometimes my depth is shallow, but quite frankly, that my shallow is not very shallow. Ego. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that word we Brunoed earlier. <laughs>
Now it'll be interesting to hear your answers to the questions in the comment section below and if you do want to watch the full conversation you can also see the link to that in the description below.